Right, we have head coach of Nashville SC. We'll start with questions in the room. Can you raise your hand if you want to get started? Hey, Gary. Um, tough match right there uh, towards the end, but I'm just curious about your take on there were a lot of refereeing decisions that went on for both sides on all sorts of things, so I would just like to hear what, what you saw from the sideline. Well, there, there, there were a couple of very, very important decisions, um, certainly in terms of extending, extending the lead for ourselves. The offside goal is, is obviously the, the first bone of contention. I've not seen it again, so I can't say, but I'm guessing that everyone in the room here has had a better view than I have and seen it more than once. All I would say is that I understood that the rules were if there really wasn't any real clear and obvious error, then the decision on the field should stand. And what I'm hearing without seeing it myself is that there was no way of saying it was offside. The second one for me actually was earlier on in the game on Tyler. You know, a penalty call that, uh, you know, I couldn't quite understand why there was no second look you know, that VAR weren't asking the referee to go and have a look at his monitor. It looked from where we were that Tyler cleanly got the ball in front of the goalkeeper who then pulled him down. Um, so a couple of really, really big decisions in terms of, as I said, extending our lead. Um, and I think maybe the other couple just to look at, I'm not saying that they were anything more than were given, but there were a couple of dubious off the ball incidents. I think there was a there was one in front of us where Jacob was visibly stopped in his tracks. Um, like I say, I'm not suggesting that it was a sending off. I think I think maybe the clearest one of an elb an elbow was earlier on in the game when Jacob got completely wiped out when he was um, in full stride. So, look, I can't, I can't say for sure because I haven't seen him again. We'll go with Claudio next. Gary, obviously uh, we saw a very good game, I think. Uh, there were some spectacular performances, in my opinion, from some of the guys in the, in the group. Uh, maybe you'd like to mention some of those uh, for us. And at, at the same time, what went on on that last goal right there. How much, obviously there is always a uh, positive stuff from the other team to keep looking, but how much in your opinion was that part or maybe uh, careless from, 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 from Nashville uh, to permit that score? Yeah, uh, look, let me, let me take the first part of that question first. I think there were some huge positives out of the game. There were some huge performances in the game. Um, the opportunities, chances, and goal scoring moments created outside of the goals that were scored. And, you know, it's easy to say that Jacob, you know, may well have come away with man of the match. His two goals were, were terrific. His second one on his weaker foot was exceptional. Um, fantastic to see Hanny out there again. It's been a long while. And I think that lift. Um, that inspiration that he gives the group, hugely helpful. The two centre-backs, I thought, did a wonderful job for the vast, vast majority of the game. Um, and, and maybe that leads on to what, you know, you were suggesting there for the, the final goal. Um, losing Walker in the middle of that back line is always a blow. It can take defenders, especially central defenders, a little bit more time to get into the game, the pace of the game. Again, I haven't seen the goal back, but I'm being told that there were a couple of players that got dragged into areas that they shouldn't have done. My first thought was that maybe Tyler should have been a, a Taylor should have been a little bit tighter to Ruiz out on the right hand side. Look, nonetheless, we're in the closing moments of the game. I think the vast majority of the display tonight was very passionate. It was very cup orientated. The guys threw everything at the game. We could have 
and maybe should have been in a better position than we were at 2-1. And there's always going to be those defining moments. And maybe we've seen them. The referee's given, or VAR have given an offside when we should have gone 3-1 up. And Luis Suarez scores in the 95th minute. Maybe they're defining moments in a tie, but we won't know, obviously, until next Wednesday. What I would say is, hell of a game. Very, very proud of the performance from the guys. We created an awful lot against an exceptional team. And I see no reason why we won't go to Miami in five days' time, six days' time, whatever it is, and put on a real show. There's still plenty of mileage in this tie. Um, but we see firsthand again the exceptional qualities. It's a completely different level of, of intelligence from the likes of Lionel Messi, Busquets and, and Suarez. Completely different level. And, and for the most part, I thought the guys did a wonderful job. We'll go with the gentleman in the front. Uh, yeah, Gary, we, you, you just touched on it some there, but do, is there something about playing Miami and everything that comes with this that, that brings out the best in, in your guys? It's a lot like the game in August. This was a real fight. Yeah, I mean, look, you, if you look at, if you look at the, the final, why wouldn't you be inspired? You know, first final that the team have here in front of a sellout crowd against, you know, the the the, the best player that's ever walked the planet. Um, if that doesn't inspire you, then nothing will. And maybe we could say the same about tonight. Um, you know, the crowd turns out, which they do, you know, on on most occasions here anyway. But I think there's a slightly different edge and feel to the atmosphere when. Lionel Messi's in town, you know, he, he is the show and an exception, exceptional individual. Um, it, it squeezes a little bit more, of course. Um, it's not always easy to get to those heights. And, you know, on these one-off occasions in such a prestigious tournament, the guys, I think, have left everything out there. No two ways about it. Real quick, let me... Uh, you spoke of atmosphere. I just want to correct the attendance tonight. It was 31,109 30, here at Kids Park tonight. 30,109. 30,100. Sorry, I, gotta, I also got, got the wrong number again. Hey, I'm, I'm good with 1,100. Yeah. <laughs> Gary, I, I know you've talked a lot about Tyler just over the last couple of weeks, but tonight, I mean, playing it would look like as the, as the nine for a lot of a lot of the match. Just what did you make of his performance and, and what he was able to do Um isolated a lot yeah um I, I wanted to try and get hanny and tyler together um understandably so it's been a little while since um we, we saw those guys out in uh, the dominican uh, you know any any moments that i can get i want them to keep building that bond relationship and connection and and it wasn't easy you know, I thought I thought Miami did a really good job of of stepping a little bit higher. Um, you know, al almost man for man on 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 occasions, but within that there's risk, and the risk was that we scored early on, and we created two or three other really good moments. That you know, in in ties like this, where you know that Miami have got the quality to create. We've been given four or five moments tonight and scored two. And on most occasions, you say, OK, that's good enough. But it's not against these. You know, you've got to turn that into three, maybe even four, because you know that they're more than capable of turning the screw. So, yes, there were plenty of moments where um, Tyler and Hanny got a little bit isolated. They squeezed the game and, and took control of the ball, which they do on a lot of occasions. And it became very much a counter-attacking game for us. But for the most part, that plays into the hands of the likes of Jacob and Hanny and Tyler in, in, a, in a slightly different way. So we've maybe not seen the sort of connection and quality that we know both of those guys are capable of. Sam still sits in the background waiting for that that third piece of the puzzle to to maybe offer a different dimension again. I thought both of the guys did a really good job tonight. Not easy against the back three. 
Three good central defenders. Um, I thought our three predominantly attacking players in Jacob Haney and, and Tyler did a wonderful job and they've created some good moments tonight. Gary, uh, you know, speaking on Jacob Schaffelberg's performance, the last two games, if my memory serves me correct, five points in the last two games, three goals and two assists. Can you touch a little bit more on Jacob? Is he just, is the confidence there? Has he finally gotten through that, that just brick wall of just like getting over the hump, I guess is the best way I'm trying to put it? Well, we're looking at consistency now, right? What we know is that he has a tremendous amount of talent and he's a frightening individual. Not scary, as, as you might see some players, you know, they're, they're, they're physically scary. Jacob's a million miles from that, actually. But he's scary in, you know, and, and frightening in the way that he attacks the game with his pace and his, his direct nature. And tonight, we saw the very best of him. Um, he was given space to run into, opportunity to run at players. He not only scored two goals and took them fantastically well, um, he also created one or two other really good moments. And, you know, tonight he was certainly the pick of our attacking players. We're now looking for that push and, you know, consistent level of play. And, and each game presents a different challenge. Tonight they played a very high line. The early goal, I think, maybe played into that a little bit more. Um, but when we find ourselves maybe in the ascendancy and higher up the field, then there's a different, a different world that he's got to try and navigate. So, you know, in the position that he's in at the moment, it's a great spot. I'm sure he's ultra confident. He's feeling top of the world. And, you know, long may that continue because we might well need that again next Wednesday. We'll conclude with the gentleman here in the front. Gary, can you talk a little bit about their width? That when they, when they were in possession, they had... They were really wide. It caused it caused Shaq and Lovitz a lot of problems. Uh, was there any thought about changing structurally to combat that, or or how do you how do you how do you kind of deal with that? So they came here with three cent centre backs. Uh, well, maybe maybe that was a shift. I'll never know. Only I know that um, maybe that was what he planned. Um, but with Jordi Alba out, maybe he felt as though that was the best way of, of implementing his players. Once you play with wing backs, especially talented wing backs, and someone like Julian Gressel has played that role, I believe for Tata as well, they get high. They're very capable individually. I would say Julian Gressel's probably one of the best deliverers of a, a cross in the league. His, his distribution, his, his capabilities on the ball were obviously, um, you know, very, very high calibre. But it was the wing-backs that caused us the problem. OK. The change is to put Alex as a right wing-back and match him up. In doing so, I felt we would open up too many gaps and pockets for the likes of Lionel Messi and Busquets to get into those dangerous areas in between lines. Because now the game's very stretched from a, um, you know, from a touch line to touch line point of view. So I, I left the guys in positions that I felt they could be most confident, achieve the most at home going forward. And I don't think I was wrong in that aspect because we, we made some good opportunities. But you're absolutely right. In the end, the right wing back, I think it was Ruiz, started what was the dangerous and danger in that final moment. I think I mentioned over here somewhere, I felt as though Taylor should have got a tad tighter. He was on the field for not long, fresh, and maybe could have got a yard or two closer to the boy, who, who is by nature a central midfield player. He's not a wing back. That gave them some traction and dragged one or two players possibly out of areas that in the end were, were, were the difference. Um, but I, I genuinely thought for the most part, we did a wonderful job of condensing the central part of the field, making life difficult, absorbing some pressure. And 
I thought the, the start of both halves were electric. You know, we, we were the better team for 15, 20 minutes of both halves. And they, they got into the game to control of the ball and, and finished both halves probably the stronger. Um, so that's the tail of the tape, as they say. You know, it, it's ended up on even terms. We'll feel aggrieved because we were 2 1 up and might well have been in a better position. Um, I'm sure they feel great that they've scored two away goals, but I think the tie's on the knife edge. I think there's an opportunity here. We have some tools and some players that I don't think they like very much and, and affects them. Make no mistake, they have plenty too. That concludes tonight's press conference. Thank Coach, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Like that much peace. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Break the seal first. Got me closer? This is good. Get closer. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jacob has a throw. Pardon me? Has the throw. Looks like you took uh... Yeah, it was a pretty good one. Um, but it was just a yellow, I guess. So that's that. How did it feel uh, being out there? It seemed like it was getting a little, little handsy, a little nasty out there. So how did it feel? And do you do you like that sort of game? Is that more your speed or do you not really? I mean, I'm an honest player. I just like to play soccer. I don't like to do any of the other stuff. So when I talk to the referees or anything, I tell them that I just play the game and I look where the ball is. I don't do any of the dirty stuff. So, I mean, I'm not for that. Um, but if it's to try to get me off my game, I guess I understand a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a dirty player. I'm an honest player just, like, running behind and playing. Gary I'd talked about the starts you guys had in, in each of the halves there. What went into that and, and you know, how much of an impact, especially there in the, in the first half with the starts that you guys had? Yeah, the starts were good. We had a lot of energy coming out. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think we could ask for a better start. So we were really happy about that. Obviously not happy about the result at the end of the day, but it's something that we can work off for sure. Jacob, how do you explain that uh, that weak-footed goal other than maybe expected that energy? I honestly had no idea that I did it. Honestly, I hit it. I was like, I don't know if I've ever actually done that in a practice game before. So um, let alone in a game um, was pretty cool. And to have my mom, dad, and brother there, which I've never scored in front of. So um, a lot of emotions going on there. So it was, it was really cool. We were joking that uh, who needs Messi if you have, if, if you have uh, Jacob. I'm <laughs> well, I mean, he's, he's, he's an amazing player. Well, so I mean. No, no, we were just joking about it. But uh, what, what comes into play for, for you to have a game like tonight so complete in, in so many aspects? It's, it's amazing for my confidence. You know, you see stuff every once in a while about um, what you can and can't do. So just have one of these games to, to, to feel comfortable yourself is, is good to have every once in a while. You and Julian kind of complement each other in a way to where there's just going to be space no matter what to take advantage of, especially for you. So how much do you enjoy playing in a game like that where you know there's going to be that opportunity? I love it. I mean, there's a the defensive part, which is, it comes with every game, but um, knowing that we're going to win it and there's going to be some sort of counterattack is – Amazing! It's the best for me, honestly. I love it. Um, you know, watching Rob in the press box, it can kind of be hard to tell. You know, maybe some of the subtleties or you know, small movements, like the player like Lionel Messi is making, you know, just walking around the pitch. But I guess, what, what what kind of are you seeing? What's kind of your perspective just from the field, from from watching him? I guess how he creates chances. It's crazy. I mean, I he goes and just hits a ball where I'm just thinking he's clearing it, but it goes to someone's foot every time. Um, it's crazy. I mean, I'm going to press somebody, he's just playing a ball, and I look back I'm like if somebody's got it and. It's sure enough, it goes to right one of their Miami players. So it's it's amazing to be on the field watching that happen too. Um, it's 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 really cool to see. A lot of good things for you guys tonight, but I would imagine too there's probably some frustration at yeah. and not being able to, to hold the lead. Yeah, um, of course. Uh, just being a defensive team, I think we expect a lot from from ourselves. So I think it's a bit of a disappointment. But of course, there's always positives and negatives from every game that we can take out. So um, we're looking forward to going back to Miami and. and See what we can do. Where do you put your chances for the return leg in Miami? Oh, I mean, pretty high. Was, was that a trick question? I don't know. No, how to no, no, was, no, no, I guess there's only one answer for that one. Just I how think. do you? How do you? I, I guess how do you see? Uh, uh, Gary Smith said there's no um, sort of uh, there's no reason for us to not go out there and put on a show. Yeah. That, do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I, I got no idea. There you go. I imagine this is as congested a schedule as you've ever started a season with in your yeah. young career. So just from like a scouting perspective, how have you had to kind of handle it? Does it help that Miami played LA Galaxy not too long ago and maybe you can sort of a, go two for one on preparing for Miami? And, and just overall, how have you handled that in preparing for opponents? Yeah, it's been a lot. Um, I think we've kind of come into our, ourselves, I guess, with 
our identity so we don't have to maybe play as much to who I don't know how to put this I guess we don't have to change up our formation as much to who we're playing we just kind of do our own thing every game um, yeah so I think that's it's a good thing for us that we're, we're, we're doing that Gary had a lot of good things to say about your game that also though next kind of next level is kind of consistency game yeah. after game is that yeah. something that you're kind of seeking yeah 100 percent. i've since i've started i've had up and downs so um consistency is one of those things i would love to have um i'm trying to put a lot of work in every day to to get to that point um so hopefully i'll do it i know i have it in me but just to just to start showing it every day on the or every week on the field jacob um, some of us think that this is the, the real rival for for for, for Nashville in, in MLS and just about everything now. You know, every tournament you guys meet in Miami and you get these great games, actually. Is that a correct assessment? Yeah, I think that the fans obviously help quite a bit with these rivalry, rivalries, um, just coming out and showing up and making making it feel like it's this massive game, which is a lot of fun to play in. Um, yeah, I feel like we're just getting rivalries every every year new ones i think we have like that's our third one now or something rivalry team i guess if you were if you were to say so we're getting a lot who's your Which favorite is, favorite rival ah jeez i don't know i actually have no idea <laughs> it's tough to pick Jacob, but all fun uh early se early season tournament as opposed to kind of league stuff which led into the latter part of the season what's what are everybody's legs like here playing these double game weeks it's it's hard for sure. Um, recovery is, is a tough thing, but I think uh, we have such a uh, I guess old team, but we have an older team, so they understand how to recover and what their body needs to get back on the field. So it's nice to see that and, and have those older guys to, to guide you along um, every day. It seems like anytime there's a member of your family uh, up in the stands, you score. Your your, your ex-wife, I mean your wife. Yeah, I was, was going to say, yeah, oh, my wife, wife, no, 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 Actually, you got to have a We're, we're no. super happy, so. <laughs> <laughs> just, she scored when she was uh, still your girlfriend yeah, yeah, here yeah, yeah, for the yeah. first time. Yeah. And now you scored twice when somebody else. Can we bring another member to Miami or not? Well, honestly, my family, my parents have been to uh, quite a few games, and they've never seen me score. So, okay. I mean, it was, I almost had a tear come down my face after that first goal because it was just like such a, a uh, surreal moment to have them there um, and even walking out because I looked up to my brother so much this, so, so now to have him watching me on the same field with the likes of all those players it was like the I just had to take a moment when we were walking out to, to feel how amazing that moment was are they coming to Miami then? I might have to convince them I might have to <laughs> they'll be here against LA on the weekend they're staying so we'll see Thanks, Jacob. No Thank you, you it. Against Miami, uh, did it feel pretty similar to the League's Cup final? I know you all played once in between, but mm -hmm. this kind of had the same vibes as the final, obviously, being at home and everything. What were some of the similarities and differences from that League's Cup game? Um, yeah, it was an intense game. Uh, we were expecting that from a good Miami team. Um, but, uh, yeah, d definitely a different game, though. You know, obviously, you know, different Miami team, different, you know, coach. Well, same coach, but more of a preseason, more time to prepare. So, um, but yeah, it was a good game and uh, all to play for in Miami. How close was the was the outside call in your mind, and, and how much of an impact on the games that Anna wanted? On oh, no, the outside calls, but the yeah. outside call. Oh, the offside. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess it was close. I've, I've looked back on it. I guess they said it was like my elbow or my hand or something yeah. was, was <laughs> offside, which you know, a bummer. But um, but yeah, I was celebrating. I thought you know it was a good goal, but um, yeah, it goes like that sometimes. So hopefully, next one, next one goes on. How much was an, of an impact does that end up making? That, that that goal does get waved off. Right? Yeah, obviously that would have been you know three one more or less. You know the game maybe would have been over. You know they came back and scored at the end. So um, yeah, just a bummer. You know obviously you know we'll learn from it. You know can't give up that, that goal at the end. But yeah, it would have definitely made it a little bit difficult for them if that you know goal was uh, was counted. Shaq, you obviously had that, that goal called off late, but I mean, you also set up the first goal and it felt like you guys had a lot of space kind of down their their left side, your right. Um, mm -hmm. Just kind of. What was the, the game plan, and how did you feel like you were able to take advantage of that space on the counter? Yeah, um, obviously the counter is, you know, one of our strengths. You know, obviously when it goes on one side, the other side, you know, is usually open. So we just want to, you know, exploit that. You know, obviously, you know, they have uh, wing backs, and, you know, want to get behind them. You know, the center backs make them work, too. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of our game plan. You know, sit back, and any time we got a chance, you know, try to, you know, take advantage of it. Shaq, you know, I, I think it's been maybe reported out there that, you know, Lionel Messi spends, you know, maybe 80% of the game walking. He's walking. You know, he's running a lot less than you know, all of our forwards because, you know, he's walking so much in the game. I guess how, how different is that for you to defend, I guess, than somebody who relies a lot on their athleticism or explosiveness? Are you doing anything differently, like, you know, maybe watching his eyes or reading his body language more? Uh, don't, don't let that fool you. Don't let, you know. <laughs> 
I wouldn't say walking, but maybe not, you know, as mm -hmm. intense on the defensive end. You know, mm -hmm. obviously when he gets the ball, you know, you always have to count for him. Um, it seems like, you know, he's out of the play and then he just pops up and, you know, he's on the ball and, you know, creating a chance. So, um, yeah, definitely one of those players you definitely have to you know, look at. You can, it's easy to, like, you know, take your eye off him and relax and then all of a sudden he has the ball. So, yeah, don't let the, don't let the you know, walking kind of fool you. So, mm -hmm. he's still very much in, in the play. Jack, even with this court and right and, the, you know, the tying game and everything, how confident are you because of the game the team played at the, you guys can put it uh, in Miami. Yeah, very confident. Obviously, we know it's not it's not going to be easy. You know, Miami at home. You know, they have you know two away goals, so you know we have to go for the game as well too. So we know that um, we will prepare you know as well as we can. You know, focusing on the game on Sunday. Then after that, we'll we'll think about the next game on Wednesday. Is there anything you have to do differently with going Thursday, Sunday, Wednesday, like you are here in the next seven days to to recover and prepare? Anything different, or is it kind of just business as usual for you? Um, yeah, just business. Obviously, recovery, you know, is very important, you know, first and foremost, you know, ice baths, whatever we have to do, and obviously, you know, getting our minds in a different place, having to shift to league and then shift back, you know, to, to CONCACAF. So, um, we have a good coaches, and, you know, they'll prepare us well, and uh, we'll be ready. Still no Sam, obviously, but, but do you think fans and maybe the team, too, just got a little bit more sense of, you know, Hani and, and Tyler out there, and, and maybe the, the opportunities that will be created by this team. Yeah, for sure. And Hani is, you know, one of our, you know, if not our best player on the team. You know, he's very differential. So um, having him back would definitely a plus. You know, Tyler as well, too. And, um, yeah, so when we have everyone back, I think it will be a plus for the team. The more weapons we have, the better. So, um, yeah, whenever he's ready, we'll be, we'll be walking him open arms. Was there plenty of the dirty game, like uh, it looks like we saw from upstairs? Uh, I wouldn't say dirty, just intense. Two teams trying to win, you know, obviously, you know, I like that about, about the game as well, getting a little trippy. I think that's fun for everyone. So, um, obviously not overboard. I think it was, you know, perfect, you know, a tense, two teams getting in and trying to win. So no problem on my end, at least. Does it feel at this point like you guys are kind of developing a bit of a rivalry with Miami? Um, I mean, I guess you can say that. Obviously, we played them in the final. We play them now. Um, obviously, it's always a, a tight encounter with them. Um, I wouldn't say it's a rivalry yet, but, yeah, it's always, you know, nice to play, play against them. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Jack. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you.